Hi everyone, my name is Pavitra Vey, Department of Chemistry. Today we are going to discuss a topic called surface coating. In that surface coating, we will study about paints and paint. Paint is any liquid, liquefiable or mastic composition that after application to the substrate in a thin layer converts to a solid film. It must commonly used to protect or color or to provide texture to the object which gives a attractive look for the object. In paints, we have basic four components, binders, dilutants, pigments and additives. Binders are used to bind the paint to the substrate and uh, some of the pigment binds in the paint inside and the dilutant which alters the viscosity of the paint and pigments which imparts the color to the paint and the additives which gives extra qualities for the paints. In that we will discuss the binders. The binders is a film forming component of a paint. In a paint mixture the binder is responsible for providing addition, binding the pigment and also gives the paint resistance properties which make the final coating tough and durable. The binders are nothing but which binds the paint on the substrate. It looks like clear and glossy. It should be clear and glossy. If it is colored or any impurities are present in that, it imparts the color and uh, which diminishes the activities of pigment. Okay. Uh, hence, we use the binders as clear and glossy. The presence of pigment interferes with this quality. Next, uh, we have types of binders in that drying oils, natural oils that polymerize as they dry, take longer time to dry and have variable properties. The properties varies from one crop to other. Next point is uh, alkyd resins, most common resins to be used in solvent based paints. They are usually polyesters and used for both air drying and heat cured paints. Next third point is vinyl and acrylic emulsions. These are emulsions in which uh, in water and uh, are the most common water based binders for use in household paints. Then uh, next type is epoxy resins. These resins are based on polymers containing the simple organic compounds oxyrains. Oxyrains are nothing but ethylene oxides. A variety of other components are added to give a wide range of properties. Other components which also comes under additives. Next polyurethanes. These are the polymers of any esters of carbamic acids that is NH2COOH which has both amine group and an acid group. Polyurethanes based paints are tough durable films that retains their gloss and are easy to clean, often used for painting aircrafts. The function is, uh, it has application in painting aircrafts. And then we move to the pigments. Pigments are granular solids incorporated into the paint to contribute color. Fillers are the granular solids incorporated to impart toughness, texture, give the paint special properties. So the fillers fill, fill the pigments in the paints they act as a fillers or uh, to reduce the cost of the paint alternatively some paints contain dyes instead of or in combination with the pigments pigment and uh, dyes are a different components but they impart color to the paint in that we have different types of paints uh, paint pigments <coughs> in that first one is lead white which gives a white coloration having a chemical composition 2BBCO3, PBOH twice and zinc white, titanium white, ZN white, TiO2. Uh, lead white and the titanium white are the used white paints or the white pigments. Then the unpainted canvas, it is empty. Cadmium yellow CDS, chrome yellow PBCRO4, cadmium red CDSE, vermilion, Vermilion is nothing but which gives a brilliant red or a scarlet red which is a composition HGS. Sienna. Sienna is actually an earth pigment. Contains iron oxide. 
which is yellowish brown in color when it undergo heating it gives reddish brown it which is also called burnt sienna b u r n t burnt burnt sienna and uh, this chemical composition is given then yellow ochre and uh, amber amber is nothing but it, it is also a natural pigment darker than ochre uh, and it is dark yellowish brown color on heating which gives dark brown color it is nothing but burnt amber next one is ultramarine blue cobalt blue prussian blue viridian green and chrome green these are the different pigments and uh, these are the chemical composition given next we will move to the dilutant or solvent or thinner it is the major component of a paint this is the most basic sense the liquid component of a paint is simply responsible for transporting the binder and the pigment to the substrate surface which acts as a transporting material the main purpose of the dilutant is to dissolve the polymer and the adjustment of the viscosity of the paint it is very much important so it should adsorb or uh, the paint should bind to the surface it is uh, depends on the viscosity of the paint it is volatile and does not become a part of the paint film see thinner is a volatile uh, material which vaporizes its function is to dissolve the polymer and to adjust the viscosity of the paint it is also controls the flow and uh, flow is nothing but viscosity and application properties and in some cases can affect the stability of the paint while the liquid state its main function is as the carrier for the non volatile components to spread heavier oils for example linseed oil in the case of oil paints we are using linseed oil as a medium as in a oil based interior house paints a thinner oil is required in order to vary the viscosity these volatile substances impart their properties temporarily once the solvent has evaporated the remaining paint is fixed to the surface of the substrate next uh, we have types of thinners in that solvent used as a carrier in paints like water white spirits mineral turpentine spirits white spirit is a mixture of um, mixture of saturated aliphatic and alicyclic hydrocarbons and in that thinner uh, xylene toluene alcohols ketones xylene is a pure aromatic solvent having benzene ring structure its molecular formula is c8h10 we know toluene it is a pure aromatic solvent with a benzene ring structure whose molecular formula is c6h5ch3 next one is alcohol in alcohol we will use n butanol isopropanol majorly Uh, these are the organic compounds having a hydroxyl group as a functional group bound to the carbon atoms of an alkyl group ketones it is an organic solvent in which carbonyl group c double bond o is bonded to two other carbon atoms see these are the types of thinners then we move to the additives additives depends being on the type of paint and the intent use and the requirement by the customers we use some of the additives to give extra qualities to the paint in that first one dispersants to separate and stabilize the pigment particles silicones to improve weather resistance dryers to accelerate drying time for example zirconium cobalt lead zinc were added as a dryers anti settling agents to prevent pigment settling okay in order to uh, if we not use this anti settling agent the pigments will concentrate on the on some areas which looks odd when it is painted and then bactericides fungicides and algae sites this prevents the bacterial activity fungal activity and algal activities in the paint when it is preserved or applied on the substrate next we have the fillers fillers acts as a pigment extender they fills the pigments in the paint it reduces the paint cost and also controls the viscosity of the paint little bit quartz sand 
that is silicon dioxide finely ground or powdered quartz is a filler increasing the abrasion resistance of the paint abrasion is nothing but resi resistant to the rubbing action on the paint dark protects the substrate from the penetrating water water repellent then barite BaSO4 is a colorless or white inorganic mineral having high hardness and chemical resistance it is used as a reinforcing additive next one is calonil clay is used in emulsion paints as a gloss reducing additive other than that limestone calcium carbonate or CaCO3 it is used as emulsion paints as a filler extending expensive pigments these are the fillers and uh, then we have types of finishing here there are actually four types of finishing gloss finishing semi gloss finishing satin or eggshell finishing matte finishing you can see the images in the images you can compare it and observe the what is the what it actually looks like see this is the matte finishing this is satin or eggshell finishing this is semi gloss finishing and this is glossy finish next we will move to the types of paints in that first one emulsion paints any paint consisting of an emulsion here emulsion means oil in water solvent water solvent is known as emulsion paints emulsion paint is water based with some additives so make it more durable but it can usually be scrubbed off with water and detergents water paints can be easily washed with detergents so here we are using oil in water so it can be easily washed modern emulsions are water based with the vinyl or acrylic resins added to make them more hard um, than traditional emulsions this results in varying degrees of sheen or a shine in the finishing as the shine increases the paint tends to be more hard wearing so the ranges usually offers matte eggshell silk satin and full finishing these are the emulsion paints and then we move to the enamel paint enamel paint is a paint that air dries to a hard usually glossy finishing used for coating surfaces that are outdoors or otherwise subject to hard wear or variations in temperatures it should not be confused with decorated objects in painted enamel so painted enamel is different in enamel we have two types water based enamels and oil based enamels water based enamels contain acrylic resins as a binder they contain inflammable solvents lower order but in case of oil based enamels they contain oil or turps based alkyd as a binders contains flammable solvents strong odor due to the solvent fumes and then we have other types of paints based on the properties or the additives we are using rust inhibiting paints and primers which inhibits a rust acts as an anti corrosive agent because they have anti corrosive pigments and then fire retardant paints these are the specially formulated with the silicone or and pvc polyvinyl chloride or other substances to reduce the flame spread of the combustible materials next one is heat resistant paints these are uh, specially formulated with silicone resins to withstand high temperature next one is tumescent coatings these when exposed to the heat or a fire swells to form a thick insulating layer of inert foam the foam will be formed when it is subjected to heat or any hazards so that it can be acts as a protective layer next we will move to the characteristics of an ideal paint here the paint should con paint should have a more durability when it is applied on the surface and it should weather resistant and it should be attractive in nature and the paint must not allow molds or algae to growth on it and it should not have any joint visible in between or cracks in the in it it should be elastic in nature must be able to withstand change in the temperature it should have ideal resistant to corrosion and protect the material over which it is used and it should possess good spreading and covering power as it is determined by its cost 
these are the ideal characteristics of paint